If it has a place to rest your feet and at least a 50cc engine, then what you're probably looking at is a scooter. In this video, I'll be exhibiting five different innovative 2021 scooters, from the pedal-assisted Skybike to the dangerously exciting 8,000-watt Nuke Urban from Rihu. If you stick to the end, you'll even get a look at the Zap i300, the world's first two-wheeled vehicle to use Nona technology. Don't know what that means? No worries, all will be revealed soon enough. I'm Glenn, and let's get to it. Five. First up on the docket comes from a company that spent 10 years with green energy products before they started manufacturing electric vehicles. Bumblebee Bikes is a quaint name. They specialize in making quaint products that help us revolutionize our standards for a clean world. And from this dedicated company, we have a pedal-assisted only scooter by the name of the Skybike. This green-friendly goer does have a motor, albeit only 250 watts, but the Skybike doesn't need much more for what it is. Indeed, with only a meager motor, this partially pedal-powered piece of transport is looking at around 15 and a half miles per hour, with a range of over 40 miles on a single charge. Part of the beauty of this model is that the age requirement to ride is only 14, and it doesn't require insurance. It would make an excellent gift for young ones trying to maintain school and their first job. The Skybike is easy to use, easy to maintain, and cheap to run. It also happens to have an angle rating of 15 degrees, making it more valuable on slopes than some. The relatively inexpensive $1,800 price tag is appealing, and the 12-month guarantee doesn't hurt either. I'm Allie, and it's Mind's Eye Trivia Time. By looking at just these images, do you know what this is and where it's from? Leave the correct answer or your best guess in the comment section below. Four. Turning up the dial a little, Baja Auto is bringing some heat. This India-based company is a subset of the Baja Group, which has been around since the mid-1920s. It has hands in many industries, the least of which is its automotive branch, Baja Auto. Baja Auto is ranked as the world's fourth largest three- and two-wheeler manufacturer. The question is, does the Chaytok live up to that hype? To answer that, we must first ask, what is the Chaytok? Well, it's a sleek-looking fella with a streamlined design and it comes in six different colors and two variants. Aside from a bit of customization, the Baja Chaytok also seems very simple to use if their demonstrations are anything to go by. From turning the thing on to changing your drive mode, it just seems to be intuitive. Speaking of drive modes, there are two, the Eco and the Sport. The top speed of 37 miles per hour is more than likely attained in the latter of those two modes. For those eagle-eyed viewers, you would already have noticed the elongated seat to accommodate a passenger. Below the seat, though, is the 4-kilowatt BDC motor. The battery for said motor is supposedly good for about 43,500 miles, or around 7 years of use, or just over 737 full battery charges. For you math nerds, that equates to about 59 miles per charge. The charge time for the battery isn't amazing, but Baja does offer a warranty of 3 years or 31,000 miles, whichever comes first. All in all, it seems quite a dependable ride, and for just under $2,000, it may be a no-brainer. Following the Cheetak from Baja, we have Rihu, another company with a long history, except this time from Spain. 
Getting their start in 1934, Rihu moonlit with bicycle parts manufacturing. Interestingly enough, Salvador Dali's father was a notary and certified the Rihu name during World War II. Their vehicle manufacturing days began and a few years later their first motorcycle was made. Of course, by today's standards, that motorcycle would be classified as a moped. But that's splitting hairs. Today, they make anything with two wheels, including motorcycles, mopeds, and you guessed it, scooters. One of those scooters, the Nuke Urban 8.5, is the one I'd like to talk about. The Nuke Urban 8.5 is a motorcycle-adjacent pavement plower with inverted forks and wave brake discs with a combined braking system. In the back of the bike is a rear monoshock absorber. Rihu worked closely with Bosch to develop a whopping 8 kilowatt motor for this inconspicuous trailblazer. I'll bet you're just dying to know how fast this thing can go. And the top speed sits around the 72 mile per hour range. Rihu says you can expect a range of roughly 75 miles, but that can be extended considerably to 174 miles if you have multiple batteries. Those are some pretty good numbers for a low-maintenance and green-friendly electric scooter. But the $8,500 price tag is set to match. Although it didn't land a spot on the list, we had to give an honorable mention to Husqvarna and their two new electric scooters that they've teased. This is the second wave of electric mobility brought on by Husqvarna, called the e pillen concept, and is possibly an omen for what we can expect from the Swedish manufacturer in the future. The first scooter is a traditional push scooter, and the details on it have been lacking so far as both these scooters are only in design right now. The second, named Vector, is saddle-ridden. The design is immediately eye-catching and is reminiscent of some near-future tech found in a sci-fi film or something. A top speed of 28 miles per hour and a 60-mile range for the Vector make for admittedly pretty tame metrics, and we'll have to wait to see the prices on both. Would you like us to keep an eye out for this one? Let us know in the comments. Following a theme of world betterment, Fanco is next up on the list. They say they are passionate about electric bikes and scooters and that the world must evolve to utilize transportation like them. Not only is it a cleaner direction, but it is also just more fun for Fanco. Indeed, if this wasn't the case, then we wouldn't be seeing such a significant boom in the e-scooter market. From this fire-filled company, we get the City Coco M8. This very auspicious looking electric scooter looks like you could pop beer tops off with it. I'm always a sucker for the fat tire design myself too. Stability, aesthetics, and off-road power are all pluses in my book. And speaking of power, what is the power of this triangle on wheels? Well, a 3 kilowatt motor is strapped to this thing with a max power output of 5 kilowatts. With that, the City Coco M8 can push out a max speed of 45 miles per hour, which isn't too shabby. With the 60 volt battery, the City Coco M8 is looking at a range of around 55 miles with a single charge. That's not all though, because this model has a quick swap battery design, allowing easy two way charging. If you're interested in the City Coco M8, you're looking at $2,200. One. 
we seem to find ourselves at the end of the video. It's been fun, it's been a pleasure, and I hope it's been entertaining. Before we say our goodbyes though, how about one more go? For the last showcase on this list, we have one last company to highlight, and they go by the name of Zap. That's with two Ps. Zap is a UK-based company that manufactures and then sells high-performance electric vehicles. They commit themselves to original designs, safety, and quality. The embodiment of those values is found with their first model, the i300, which happens to be the world's first and only Nona carbon-fibered body. The result is a very unique-looking scooter, and while beauty lies within the eye of the beholder, the i300 is one beauty. The fat tires help in my case, as you may remember. Another unique aspect of the i300 is that it possesses two battery packs. Zap says you can expect around 56 miles of riding when put into eco mode before you need to charge. As for driving modes, it seems the i300 has three. The eco mode has a max power output at 4 kilowatts, the power mode with a max output of 11 kilowatts, and something referred to as zap mode has a peak of 18 kilowatts. That's roughly equivalent to 20 horsepower, and at a max speed of 60 miles per hour, the i300 seems pretty efficient. As of right now, the i300 seems to be Zap's only model, but with their creativity, I'd like to see a few more in the future from them. How about you? Did you like what you saw, or is one of the other scooters I showed you more to your liking? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear your opinions.